Hi there, I'm Noah Bradley, and I'm back for another video to talk about practicing. Um, I got a lot of questions on my last video, which you can check out, uh, which I talked about how much you should practice and kind of dispelling some of the myths around that and talking about what's actually important with practicing. And I got a lot of questions specifically about, well, how do you practice? So I mentioned like there's a lot of like bad, wasted ways to practice, and I want to talk about how to actually practice because uh, that's super important because um, if you are putting in the hours that's great but it's super vital that you actually practice correctly because um, I think practicing wrong holds a lot of people back um, I certainly know I've gone through phases myself where I didn't see the results I wanted because I wasn't practicing in the right ways um, to get the best results so if you're not seeing the results you want to see in your art it's probably you know if you are putting in the enough hours it's probably because you're not practicing in the best way and being mindful enough and focusing uh like you need to so i want to talk a little bit about kind of how to avoid that stuff uh and how to uh how to practice well so hopefully this is helpful for some of you and again if you have any questions feel free to ask um, i am going to do another video on practicing uh, i'm going to talk about um uh, exactly what you should practice because uh, I think that's a really important question too but for now we're just going to focus on how to practice and how to practice well um, so uh, you can obviously super easily tell if you're not practicing well because you're just not getting the results you want if you're not seeing improvement in your work that's probably a good sign um, if you are practicing and you're not seeing results that's a really good sign um, so obviously like you're you might not see results if you're not practicing. <laughs> uh, if you're not practicing, not putting in the hours, and you don't really notice your art getting better, that might be a sign uh, that it's just the fact that you're not practicing at all. Um, but if you are putting in those hours and you are working hard at this stuff, but you're not seeing a notable improvement and change in your work, um, there you go. That might be a sign that you're not practicing in the right ways with the right mindset. Uh, so this video is kind of for you. Um, now, one thing to think about as far as like how to see improvement is how long does it take to see that improvement? Like, you know, if I do just as good of or bad as art, you know, one week after next, um, is that okay? Or is it, you know, I need to see improvement in a month? Uh, is it six months? Is it a year? How long is it before I should see notable results? Because art is a weird thing that you keep doing art and you keep making new pieces, but it's each incremental piece isn't that big of a contribution. It isn't that, you know, momentous of a change in your art. So I would say if you haven't noticed much improvement in maybe six months to a year, you're probably not practicing right. Um, that's going to vary. Um, you might get it down as low as three months, but that depends a lot on how much effort you're putting into it as well as which stage in the journey you're at, as well as how quickly you just pick up on things. Um, for instance, I pick up quickly on certain things to do with art, and then I've been very slow uh, picking up other things in art. And then, you know, depending on how many hours I'm putting in at a given time, uh, my art's going to change at a different rate. And then as you get further on that journey, um, if, once you're, you know, 10 years down the road, your art's not going to improve quite as notably in a year, uh, it's going to be a lot more minor nuance things once you get to that uh, really successful level. So, but I would say if you haven't seen improvement in maybe six months or a year, uh, that's a good sign that you're probably not practicing right uh, and that you need to change uh, how you think about practicing. So all that to say, uh, how do you practice? Let's, let's get to the actual the meat of things. Um, well, the first thing I want to say, um, and there's quite a few things that I've got to talk about on how to practice well. The first one is to be mindful uh, and to really think about what you're doing, where you are, how you're doing it, what you want to do, everything. You want to be really mindful about it all. It's not a passive process. Um, art, you know, can be a passive process. You can, you know, have fun, play. That's fine. I have nothing against that. But if you're really dedicated to studying, studying is an active process. You need to be there, you need to be focused, and you need to be mindful of the whole experience, everything about it. What you're thinking, what you're feeling, um, what you're uh, trying to achieve in a study, 
everything. Um, so you want to be really conscious and really thinking about things. Eventually, once you practice enough, the, a lot of this stuff becomes fairly subconscious and it's just ingrained in you. But when you're first studying, it's not, and you need to work on that. So that's, that's your goal there is to be mindful. And I would honestly suggest like actually meditating and stuff. Um, some mindfulness meditation can really help and have some benefits for even this, uh, cause it helps you to kind of be aware of, all right, am I focusing on this? How is that, uh, affecting me? You know, what's the experience here? And we'll kind of help you keep on track with that stuff. Cause I know I'm scatterbrained as anything and a little bit of mindfulness meditation has definitely helped me notice when I'm staying focused and then when my mind is just wandering off somewhere else. So I would really focus on trying to stay mindful, stay present. Um, another thing I'm going to say is to remove distractions. Uh, and this is a really big one because you can obviously make art when you're distracted and there's a lot going on and it's hectic and crazy, but it's going to be a lot harder to study if that's your environment. So I would say to try to remove as many distractions as possible. And I get that this is super hard for a lot of people for so many reasons, like you don't have your own working space or you have responsibilities. Uh, I get that. Um, it's hard, but as best as you can try to remove those distractions, because if your mind is going in a dozen different directions at once, you're going to have a hard time actually concentrating on what you're supposed to study. Um, so one thing that I love to do, for instance, is headphones, put on a pair of headphones, noise canceling headphones, are ideal because it's great to just zone everything out. And I can be in a room alone and still benefit from just putting on headphones just because there's something about, you know, it focuses you in and removes the whole outside world and lets you narrow in on this little specific objective that you've got right now. Um, so do your best to just get rid of as many distractions as possible. If you can get your own workspace, that's great. If you can just shut the door, move everything away. And same goes for like little things like phones. Like if for whatever reason you have notifications on your phone, turn all that stuff off, put it all away, remove everything, you know, close all your browsers, browsers, don't have social media open. Just, yeah, just get away from everything. Because if you're, again, if you're only dedicating, you know, 10% of your mental energy to the studies, it's not going to work. Um, so you really, really, really need to focus on things and just remove all this other stuff, uh, remove it all until your one thing you can do is really focus on this. So another thing I do is I actually on my computer, uh, have two different, uh, user profiles. And so I have a profile that it's called streaming. And so it's for streaming, but it's also for painting. That's actually the profile I use for painting now. And I just completely switch profile and I've got an internet browser. Sure. But nothing's logged in. Uh, I don't have any other programs like on my desktop I don't have video games, anything like that. It's just, you know, painting programs, uh, recording software and that's it. And boom. Uh, so I get to remove all those distractions and just be able to focus. Um, and so that's enough of a, a mental shift for me that it really helps me to get in that zone and shut everything else out so that I can focus on what I'm supposed to be doing at that moment. Um, so another thing, uh, is to be really specific about what you're learning and what you're studying at any given time. A lot of people sit down and they're like, I want to learn art and that's, that's great. I love art too. And I'd love to be better at art, but that's a terrible thing to just study. Um, that's like saying, you know, you want to be a basketball player. And so when you go to practice, you're like, I'm going to practice basketball, just all of it, all theory, all, you know, ball handling shots, everything all at the same time. Sure. You're going to get some benefit on that, but it's not going to be focused, dedicated stuff. And the same goes for this. You need to really narrow down what it is you're trying to accomplish. And I'm going to talk more about this when I talk about exactly what to study, but I do want to at least touch on it now because it's important on how in general you practice, uh, by being specific. So for instance, if I'm working on figures, I'm not just going to sit down and say, all right, I'm going to do figures. I'm just going to learn how to do figures, all of it, uh, drawing, painting, gesture, portrait, hands, anatomy, value, lighting, color, composition, uh, expression, mood, everything all at the same time. 
That's what you do when you're executing a painting. When you're executing a painting, it is a symphony of all of these different fundamental skills just coming together. And that's why it's so hard. It's really hard to make a piece. It takes a ton of different things going on and going well at the same time. But when you're studying, you don't need to do that entire symphony. Like that's not what needs to happen every single time. Sometimes you need to take a step back and realize what it is you're trying to focus on. You're like, I want to do portraits. And what is it about portraits I want to do today? Maybe I just want to focus on expressions. That's it. I just want to try to capture expressions and how do I get my, you know, work more expressive and how do I capture these, you know, various emotions? What's, you know, happening in a face uh, that changes as the expression changes. So really drill down and find out what it is that you want to study. Don't just study art. Don't just study painting. Uh, focus on something specific and uh, really, really, really focus on it. Uh, don't do all the other stuff. That's the, that's the other thing is that when you are focused on something, it lets you know what you can not do. So for instance, if, you're, if your goal is purely, purely color, that is all you want to learn. You just want to learn color. You don't actually have to work on your drawing in that study. For instance, you could say you're doing a study of, you know, a photograph. You could do a quick tracing of that photograph to get where everything is more or less, and then go on to working in color just immediately because you're not working on drawing. That's something you need to work on and you need to get good at it. And obviously it's always good to practice drawing, but if your time is limited, you've got half an hour say to do a study. Why are you going to spend the first 10 minutes drawing this thing when you really you're sitting down with the goal of working on color? So spend that 30 minutes working on color, uh, you know, spend a minute doing a quick tracing to get, you know, general proportions and then work on color. So really focus on what it is that you're trying to do and then figure out what it is you're, what you don't have to do, uh, what you're trying not to do. Um, so hopefully that, that makes sense. Uh, cause that's a, that's a really big one. And I see people mess that one up all the time. I see them do studies and they're just studies. They're just studies of everything and that has value, but I, I don't think it's the most ideal way to study and to learn. Uh, so let's hear, um, another thing, don't just watch people do things. Uh, this is a, this is a trap for a ton of people. And it comes from the fact that there's so much good content out there. There is a ton of process videos, tons of tutorials, great classes, everything. There's so much of it. And it's also not going to teach you everything you need to know. At the end of the day, art is something you need to do. It is, there's a lot of mental aspect to it, obviously, but you can't just watch somebody and then be a great artist. That's not how it works. Yeah, I can watch as many great videos of great paintings, but it's not going to actually teach me how to sit down and make a painting myself. So don't fall in the trap of just watching. Uh, make sure you're actually doing, find a good balance there and actually do. Um, that's something I kind of forgot to mention on my last video when I was talking about the, you know, three hours, that three hours does not include, uh, like watching additional stuff. So if you want to read or watch videos, that's additional to the three hours, say, uh, you'd be putting in. So it counts as practice kinda but it's not the same as actually sitting down and working on something. So keep that one in mind as well. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, this is, this is a couple of my favorite things on how to specifically, uh, study. And these are specific to art studies. So this might be slightly less relevant to other creators, but then again, you could probably adapt it. Um, so one of them is drawing from memory and this is, this is a fantastic one and will really help you uh, lock stuff in. Because one thing you'll probably find is that you're pretty good at copying. Like, you know, most artists get to a level where they're pretty comfortable copying something. They either get some reference or drawing from life or something like that, and they can sit there and draw or paint it. And it looks pretty good. Thing is, is that, you know, you take that away from them and tell them to paint the exact same thing and suddenly they're lost. Uh, they have no recollection of it. They have no idea how to do it. Um, they're completely doomed. So what do you do then? 
so the thing is, is you need to work on practicing your memory because we get so comfortable and so relaxed and reliant on the reference we have that we're not actually trying to practice memorizing things and actually getting it into our heads. So one exercise that I love that's great um, is to do a study, do a study from reference. So you know, have your reference, have your piece and do whatever kind of copy or study or anything like that of it. Then put all that away, both your study and the reference, and then do it from memory. Try to remember everything you just did. Uh, you know, if it was a color study, try to remember those colors again and, you know, recreate them. If you were trying to draw a scene, put away everything, try to draw it again. You know, if you're studying anatomy, sure, it's great to copy anatomy and copy all the muscles and stuff. Now put it all away and do it from memory. And then you're going to realize like, oh, geez, I don't remember a lot which is really good because that shows you what you need to focus on, what you need to memorize, what you need to study harder, which is really handy. Uh, so I highly recommend trying that out. It's something I love to do myself and it has always helped a ton because it kind of shows you where you're at and you really need to know where you're at because we often get really confused because we just keep copying and copying and copying and copying reference and then not doing anything to show where we're at. So the first time after, you know, say six months of just copying from reference, we do something from imagination and we're completely lost. Uh, like we have no idea what we're doing. We might be better off than we were before, but compared to our stuff that was done from reference, it's terrible. And that happens every time. So I would regularly put in these imaginative things, these memory drawings, stuff like that. So you get a better um, metric for where you're at at any given time. Um, so along those same lines, uh, the second thing that I really love, it's another study I, I strongly recommend, and I give it to all my art camp students, is to uh, do a study. You know, say you're doing a master study. So you're copying a master painting, and it's great. You're doing this. It's fun. So after you're done with that, put it away. Put away the reference. Put away your study. Then do an applied study. So using some of the same principles, whatever that is that you were studying, make a new piece. So, you know, if you're studying, say, color and lighting and general painting of a landscape, you're taking those principles of color and lighting, but you're, say, painting a new landscape. Maybe it's a new composition. Uh, you're making your own piece. You're just using uh, the information you just gleaned from that study. This is a really handy study and I, I love doing these because this is where it really matters. This is where your art really comes out because this is you making a piece using directly the stuff you just studied. And it's just doing it one after the other too is fantastic. Uh, and you start to really solidify this stuff because just doing a study can often feel a little bit abstract and removed. Um, it doesn't feel like your work because it, it isn't your work. So you have a little bit of a hard time sometimes directly applying that. So I think as soon as you can to actually get a chance to make your own piece with that study's information is a really good practice. Um, so this is another one that I'd recommend doing a fair bit of, and it's super handy. And I've loved the results I've seen people make with this. It's really, really good. So try one of those out. Um, I think you'll, I think you'll really enjoy that. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, another thing. Um, study it in different mediums. This is this is a really fun one. Um, sometimes you're so wrapped up in doing things the same way all the time that you don't develop this kind of general knowledge of something. You have a really specific understanding of one thing, but if you were to try to do that in a different way, you wouldn't necessarily know how to do it. So what I mean by that is, Maybe you're so used to drawing anatomy studies. You're, you're doing them all the time. You're doing those lines. You've got that. But if somebody asked you to sculpt that in 3D, would you be able to? Maybe, maybe not. But the, the experience of actually doing that, of actually taking that information and being like, okay, I'm going to approach it from an entirely different direction and I'm going to work in 3D. And suddenly those line drawings you were doing have shape and form and suddenly a bicep is not just you know two lines 
it's, it's this 3D form that's wrapping in and connecting, and you can actually feel that. And that's, that's a really powerful lesson. And by approaching these subjects in different new ways, you don't have to be a sculptor, by the way. You really don't. You can just move some forms around and you're going to get the general idea. These don't have to be pretty things. That's not the point of doing a study. The point of doing a study is to learn. So, you know, even if you're not a sculptor, even if you're not used to these other mediums, just trying these things out can be enlightening. Uh, don't worry about the results. So another one that uh, I recommend is also, you know, switching from digital to traditional or vice versa. So say you're studying color and you're studying color digitally. You're working in Photoshop all the time. You're studying that. Say you switch to traditional for a little while to learn uh, color theory. Uh, say you're mixing, you know, paints and stuff like that. Uh, you're using acrylics, oils, whatever you got. You're going to learn a whole new set of skills by doing that. And this is something I found time and time again is that I will go back and forth between those and pick up lessons from one and take to the other one. There's something about the technical uh, digital color knowledge that you get that you can apply to traditional. And then you're doing all this traditional stuff and you're seeing how colors mix and suddenly you can take some of that stuff and bring it into your digital work. And I love how different mediums like this help the learning process. Uh, I learned color so much better when I realized that the digital and the traditional were helping each other out. Um, so that was a that was a big thing for me. And same goes for sculpting. Uh, switching from drawing to sculpting and back just blew my mind and helped me draw better than I ever had before. Um, so if you're feeling stuck and feeling like you know you're doing the best you can, but you're not getting a well-rounded enough. Uh, education in whatever subject you're trying to learn, try to approach it from an entirely different medium. So say, you know, composition even, uh, this is a great one. Say you're really struggling with painting composition and it's just, it's not quite working for you and you can't like compose a good image. You've done studies and it's just not working. Instead of trying to just keep forcing these drawing and painting uh, studies to try to get composition, try to, you know, pick up a camera and try to come up with well-composed photographs, you know, just an entirely different way to think about the world. Like, okay, well, I can't, you know, make things, uh, for this, you know, photograph. I've got to take what I've got around me and make pictures and I've got to compose things. And suddenly it's a, it's a different skill set, And I find that to be a really refreshing way to learn just about any of these art principles. So I checked that out and try that out if, uh, if that sounds interesting to you and like it might be helpful, but I've certainly found it really helpful uh, for myself. Um, so yeah, I think that's, that's about it. Um, those, those are some really good suggestions, I think, for how to practice and how to practice well. And I really hope that this has been useful for you. Um, practicing for me is a, is a big part of what I love about art and the difference between practicing well and practicing poorly is huge. And there's so many people out there that are working hard at their art and they're just not seeing these results that they want to see. They're, you know, I get asked all the time, like they see the progression of my art and they're like, wow, how did you progress so much so fast? And it's not because I'm, you know, special or talented or anything like that. I'm not particularly, uh, I just happened to practice in the right ways. And I, I picked all this stuff up from books and talking to people and videos and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so I just kind of want to share that with you is, is all of these revelations I've had about how to practice and how not to practice and the difference between those things. So I really hope this has been helpful for you. I'm going to do some more stuff on practicing uh, as well as other subjects. So if you have any questions whatsoever, uh, let me know. And uh, I'll do my best to make some videos on that. Um, but let me know what you think about this. Uh, leave a comment below. And uh, thank you. And thank you so much for watching. So I will see you next time.